Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 23rd, 2020, recorded around 4, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, looking over Tropical Storm Laura and now newly designated Hurricane Marco in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll start with Hurricane Laura, which has some interesting changes today, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. First of all, this is expected to become a rather robust hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico, somewhere from either Texas all the way through Louisiana uh, is a possibility. Uh, and this is going to bring impacts towards the rest of Jamaica, Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, uh, and also for Cuba, this will be providing impacts throughout the day as this tries to slide off towards the west-northwest. However, there's a big caveat in that initial motion. You can see what appears to be a west-northwest uh, jog here on the satellite imagery, uh, but when you actually take a look at it, you can see where indeed our center is somewhere in this general vicinity. And you can see that we do have some deep convection starting to fire over the eastern parts of Jamaica here. And again, you know, Jamaica has some high mountains train as well. And so that ore graphic lift is also causing some additional thunderstorms to form over here. And that just increases this banding that's kind of situated out and through here. And Haiti in the Dominican Republic is just getting absolutely rocked right now with these very heavy rain bands that are coming in and wrapping around. And even for that matter now, the eastern part of Cuba uh, on the far eastern tips where some of these mountainous train areas are and we can kind of see that very good healthy look to the storm overall today um, we couldn't really see where the low level center was this morning but it, it was supposedly over in this vicinity and it now exited and kind of emerged in this general area and it's actually looking fairly healthy now uh, today now, if we take a look here at the latest reconnaissance aircraft that was in there uh, or that is currently in there, we actually have a fairly established uh, inner core with this storm. Uh, pressures of about 1,001 to 1,002 millibars that are being uh, indicated by the recon aircraft. Um, now, this stronger area of wind right here, that is probably a shoaling effect that basically is land friction in uh, encompassing with some of these showers. Uh, so that increases the winds at the flight level but down here we have seen a fairly anemic wind structure and that's to be expected uh, we obviously don't want this thing to start ramping up fairly significantly but the latest pass through recon uh, did find uh, that pressures were at about a, th a 998 to about 997 or 996 millibars with tropical storm force winds on the northeastern side of it and that looks to be maybe just a tad bit to the south and west of where the initial uh, fix was. And that is a little concerning because this has the potential to kind of scrape land or miss portions of the most mountainous trains of Cuba in through here. And that is fairly significant going forward. So this is going to be something that as recon kind of measures the environment around the storm to see if this uh, if the center keeps losing latitude and keeps diving west southwest or almost just due west because it's going to take a little bit of a jog you know it's really going to have to take that jog almost due back this way uh, to be able to get on its initial motion we kind of talked about this earlier how there's the potential for some center reformations that's going to occur and then we kind of discussed that earlier. Now, if we look here on uh, real quickly at the 850 millibar relative vorticity product, the, for this is coming from the Central University of Wisconsin Madison site. And basically, these reds and whites at your higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level. Uh, first of all, what's what? This is Hurricane Marco over here. This is Tropical Storm Laura over here. And again, Laura is situated right now between uh, Cuba and uh, the Hispaniola and Haiti region and north of Jamaica, which is right here. So this is going to dump and continue to dump a lot of rainfall, but you notice how this is a fairly round symmetrical structure uh, in the vorticity field. And that means that even if this does move over the very high uh, mountains here of the Eastern part of Cuba, what this is actually going to do is in fact, it's, in fact, it's not going to really 
dismantle, dismantle the structure that much uh, because this is a very vigorous circulation and it already survived the track through the Hispaniola Mountains uh, general vicinity in through here it actually missed uh, a more significant structure there and kept its overall larger envelope of energy so that's very important going forward and one of the things that's very interesting about uh, Laura in the position in which it's in is that we can see what's going on now. We have this large uh, upper level low that's kind of sitting out here in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's providing a big uh, upper level anticyclone around our tropical storm. And this is also helping to somewhat impart shear here on Hurricane Marco, which we'll talk about there in a moment. But that is also helping to kind of ventilate uh, Laura a little bit more and you can kind of see the ventilation the outflow of this is fairly healthy We have a fairly healthy outflow structure and that is associated uh, with uh, The center circulation becoming better defined today and as this heads off towards the west northwest here assuming this kind of gets within this general vicinity It's going to be riding within a fairly uh, decent area of shear in this uh, anticyclone is actually going to be retrograding a little bit further towards the north here over the next few days. That's going to increase uh, a higher uh, area of low shear across the Gulf of Mexico and set the stage for what could be a rapidly intensifying hurricane on approach into that area. And the H Wharf model kind of shows this very well here. Uh, we're, we're not going to focus on Marco just yet. We'll focus that on here in a moment uh, when we s explicitly talk about Marco. <clears throat> but the 12Z H Wharf uh, again has its position right around here and its center is actually a little bit further towards the north. Now you can kind of see how that drifts around and kind of mills around uh, the southern side of the Cuba coastline here. And that is very important because that allows for what could be some sort of intensification uh, as it kind of comes across before finally getting evicted a little bit further towards the north, if at all it does. Uh, but eventually, this kind of ends up into the Gulf of Mexico, where we have a fairly uh, decent upper-level anticyclone over the system. And that's when we start to see more robust intensification on the h wharf model that significantly deepens it on approach into, the, um, you know, into either Texas or Louisiana. Again, what remains to be the big question is where exactly this is going to make landfall. Uh, currently, it is, is, is expected that it might make landfall somewhere near the Texas-Louisiana border, uh, but that could be shifted a little bit further towards the west over more of Texas or further towards the east over more of Louisiana, as the 12Z uh, European model shows on the southeast side there of Louisiana making landfall. That would mean that it comes off the uh, western part of Cuba at a further nor northern latitude, and that does affect more of the uh, coastlines here of Louisiana, Alabama, and the, and the Florida Panhandle. Uh, but if the h wharf solution does pan out here or any sort of western deviation, uh, the most likely impacts are going to be confined to um, Louisiana and the Texas coastlines and not so much further west. And that's the current expectation is that this is not going to provide significant impacts to the Alabama, Florida uh, coastlines here, um, except obviously for some higher, um, you know, surf conditions as what's going to end up happening is that surfing through here is going to increase along with the uh, swells as the flow kind of increases. So there will be somewhat of a threat uh, for higher surf and maybe some coastal flooding in this general area, given how, uh, given how um, you know, basically how vulnerable this area is to storm surge, uh, it could receive some coastal flooding uh, from some of that increased surf conditions. So that's something to kind of keep in mind, but not expecting anything significant as time goes on. So we'll watch this again. It's going to be something interesting, but again, if you live here in Texas or Louisiana, you need to be preparing for what could be a potential uh, strong hurricane making landfall somewhere along the Texas or Louisiana coastlines there, uh, likely uh, within the next coming days. Now, on to Hurricane Marco, which is a hurricane that did strengthen into a hurricane earlier this afternoon. Uh, pressures of about 992 millibars with sustained winds of 65 knots or 75 miles per hour 
with gusts up to 80 moving north-northwest at 14 miles per hour. Hurricane warnings are in effect for portions of the Louisiana coastline, including Link, Ponc Link Pocatrain and also for near the New Orleans area. Again, hurricane warnings with tropical storm warnings all the way to the Mississippi, Alabama, and western Florida Panhandle coastline. This is expected to be moving west-northwest here over the next few days and or north-northwest and eventually make a, a bend back over Texas here over the next few days. Now we can see here on the visible satellite shot from tropicaltidbits.com of really what's going on. We'll kind of let this uh, buffer out a little bit, but you notice that in the frames available, we do have a little bit of a sheared environment that is kind of occurring near the cyclone. And again, we can tell this because our low level center is located in on a, about here. And what's likely starting to occur is that this is starting to kind of get pulled away from the mid-level center of circulation we might be seeing another bout of decoupling and you can also notice some dry air getting entrained into the circulation itself and that's very important because that disrupts the overall core structure now uh, marco earlier did have a fairly well developed core but you can really see uh, that this is now starting to degrade and give way to more shear uh, across this area and that's from an upper level trough that is imparting some of this southwest to northeast shear and that's kind of tilting over the vortex and sending the convection off towards the north and we've been forecasting this here over the next couple of days that this shear is only going to get stronger and stronger as time goes on as it progresses further towards the north and northwest now the recon plane that was uh, in there earlier did find pressures of about 995 uh, and obviously a drop on pressure of roughly about 993 millibars. And note all the about here are purple indicating this uh, strong upper level flow in the atmosphere associated with the Marco. And that is the hurricane force winds at flight level. And there was some surface, excuse me, some surface winds in there that were positioned at roughly about uh, 65 knots uncontaminated which suggests this did become a hurricane uh, but again the bit of intensification seems to be almost over as what we could have is a 75 or 80 mile per hour hurricane now moving off towards the north and northwest but again how far towards the north or northwest it gets remains to be the big question and we talked about this earlier that there's some considerable uncertainty because a stronger storm is going to tend to de deviate more off towards the right of the mean track and the mean track is located in about here that's the current hurricane center forecast uh, but there is a possibility that this could deviate a little bit if it does get a little bit stronger uh, but if it does end up actually with a little bit of a weaker cyclone and a little bit of a weaker system, this could end up following more of a western trajectory in through here and it would completely uh, skirt by Louisiana somewhat. So there's a lot of considerable uncertainty regarding the eventual future here of Hurricane Marco in the Gulf of Mexico. But regardless, this is likely to bring impacts here uh, all the way from Louisiana towards the western Florida panhandle and we can see this here on the satellite and radar coming here from the Tampa radar site and we can see that all of this deep convection that's located off towards the east of the center which the center of circulation for comparison is roughly right about in this region all of this shower and thunderstorm activity off towards the north and east is what we've been talking about and even for what it's worth, there is some shower and thunderstorm activity partially responsible for Marco, even across the Florida Peninsula. And this is in response to that upper level flow. And you can really see how in the visible or in the IR, the water vapor satellite imagery in the, excuse me, the IR satellite imagery, that the upper level cloud features are actually streaming off towards the northwest in here. That's the upper level cloud features and the low level features, the showers and thunderstorms, are drifting more northwesterly. Now, there's some that do follow the mean, but you can really see what we're talking about is that some of this cloud debris here uh, from Hurricane Marco is following more of an uh, east-northeast track while some of the convection is going more northwest and this creates a localized pocket of wind shear in this general vicinity and if showers and thunderstorms do get going and they're very robust in this environment 
they can occasionally produce some isolated tornadoes and that is a possibility going forward now the uh, not or the storm prediction center doesn't currently highlight an area for uh, her tropical uh, cyclone induced tornadoes to occur over florida but it is entirely possible that this outer rain bands these outer rain bands could produce some isolated tornadoes and especially uh, then from thereafter with um, Tropical Storm Laura that could induce some uh, tornadoes across South Florida tomorrow. Uh, but you can see even from the Western Florida Panhandle, this is going to be a threat for those areas uh, with heavy rainfall and some flash flooding concerns as we go on throughout time. You can see there's the flash flood warning by the Weather Service Office in Tallahassee. So going all forward here, this is the latest uh, model guidance regarding hur or Hurricane Marco out here in the Gulf of Mexico. Mostly the H Wharf and other models continues to move this further off towards the east of the deviated uh, track and does not do a significant bend back off towards the west northwest. That will be something we'll have to watch, but it should stay weaker on approach into the island or on approach into the coast. Again, most of the models are indicating that this weekends, but given that there's a little bit of discrepancy and this has been fighting off shear, it, it could certainly still be a hurricane uh, on approach into Louisiana and uh, those vicinities. So that will be something to watch. Hurricane warnings are in effect and make sure you take those warnings very seriously and make sure that you rush any uh, preparations to completion by today as impacts will begin as early as tomorrow. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and early evening. Wow, that's a rather impressive structure there coming up with uh, Laura. We'll talk about that later, uh, but I will talk to you guys again later this evening uh, after the 5 o'clock advisory. And so, hope you all have a great rest of your early afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys some more later this afternoon and evening.